65. Who would have thought that this day would come? I am officially a senior citizen, but I don't feel like one and I'm sure I don't look like one, but there's no denying it. I am 65 years old. A lot has happened in the last 65 years. I've had high highs and low lows, but God's hand was seen through all. 
and today I can say I have come this far by faith. Hmm, I remember like it was yesterday. My existence is an answer to prayer. My parents recognized the need for a comprehensive education for the children of the church and prayed for a solution. As a result, I was born to carry on the church's heritage and instill Bible truths in the young minds. Before me, my older sibling, Mount Rose SDA Primary, took care of the children up to a certain age. However, there was no follow-up to continue their education after leaving her care. Therefore, my parents prayed and supplicated for the birth of a new solution, and that's how I came into being. They were so happy that they gave me a special name. I was called the Mount Rose Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School. You hear name? That is name. Now, when I was dedicated to God, we celebrated. There was fullness of joy. I can see it now. Lots of singing and prayers of dedication to God. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for another privilege where we can bow in your presence, ascribing prayers and prayers to your name. Father, this morning we commit all that we're about to do into your care and keeping. Help that the messages intended will touch every heart. And as we sing, tune our voices. May our praise be meaningful to you. These mercies I ask in your name. Amen. Our first song, number 34, thir Wake the Song of Joy and Gladness. Number 34. Oh, 
safely through this week, God did bring us here. So we'll turn to 384, safely through another week. faithfulness number 100 as we thank God for his grace and his faithfulness to us this throwing during this past week i 
number 560. Number 559. Up, Lord, like a woman at the well, number four, nine, three.
Great God and Father, this morning we have come into your house and gather in your name to worship you. We know that we are not here by accident nor by chance, but we are here by your joint spirit. And so we ask this morning, dear God, that you please pour me in this atmosphere with your presence. Move in a mighty way, dear God. Touch every student, every teacher, everyone that is present here as we celebrate thee, Father, this noble institution. We pray, Lord, that everything that will be said and done here will bring glory and honor to your name. And that everyone that came here today will leave fulfilled and satisfied, knowing thee, God, that they would have met with you and they would have received something. And so, Lord, bless us in a mighty way. Take full control. Do what you do best, dear God, in taking care of the well-being of your people. And so we thank you once again in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome on and all. We're glad you're here. Welcome on and all. We're glad you're here. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. Welcome on and all. We're glad you're here. Happy Sabbath, one and all. We are here from the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School to worship with you as we celebrate our 65th anniversary using the theme, We've Come, come This Far By faith. faith. Join us. Stay with us. Share the page. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, yes. My parents, Mr. and Mrs. Montrose SDA Church, knew that it was important to teach the children diligently. We had to learn scripture verses and, as they used to say, write it in our hearts. Now, I didn't start off as fat as I am today. No, I was a very skinny lad in the beginning. It's only lately I put on all this size you see in here. Some of the people who began the journey with me are people like George Richards, Eldika Best, and Myrna Nayak. The first principal, Mr. Henry Bourgeois, took his mandate seriously and ensured that things were done decently and in order. And we were off. From very humble beginnings in an old society hall, then onto the downstairs of my parents' home, the Montrose SDA Church, we persevered. You see, we had a vision and a mission. And as good pathfinders, we have been taught to go on God's errands. So on we went. Twelve years later, I was gifted some land. The Grenadian government donated the land and the Canadian government founded the building. It became a family affair. Uncle Harold Purcell designed and built the building, elements of which still cause today's builders to marvel. It became a family affair. All of my cousins came on board to help me look great. Cousin Bertie, Cousin Timo, and Cousin Jimmy, they took their job seriously. And in 1972, the doors of the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School opened. Yes, I got a new name. And off we went. The family grew stronger as more relatives joined me. As we journeyed together, Cousin Shirley... Cousin Saul, Cousin Leo, Cousin Irva, Cousin Alfred, Cousin Lurlin, and so many other names. Hmm. When telling you my children and staff were talented, real talent flows through the school, you know. Just listen.
Hello boys and girls, it's lesson study time and today we're reviewing lesson number one. Our topic for today, way to pray, part one. And our memory text is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18 and it says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Today, boys and girls, you may ask, what is prayer? Think for five seconds. What is prayer? Prayer is talking to God communicating with God, just as you would communicate with your friends. And you know, friends, you're not alone. When it comes to prayer, you're not the first to pray and the first to talk to God. You are in good company, company with Daniel. Daniel, he prayed to God from the lion's den. Solomon, he prayed to God for wisdom. He communicated with God. He talked to God. Jabez, he prayed so that God will enlarge in his territory. And do you remember Hannah? She wanted a son bad, bad, bad. And she prayed to God and God blessed her with a son. And did you know the thief on the cross? Yes, the thief, the old, old, wicked thief. Yes, he prayed, he communicated, he talked to God right there on that cross. So you're in good company when you talk to God. You love your friends. Would you like to spend time speaking with them? Do you spend time speaking with your friends? Of course. And so it is with God. We ought to talk to him all the time. The Bible encourages us to pray without ceasing. My friends, we should pray to God any time. And every time. There's no specific time when we should pray and communicate with our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, we can pray in the good times and the bad times. You know, sometimes we only like to pray and give God thanks in the good times. But even in our trying times, boys and girls, you can pray to God. Yes, you can. On the bus, when you're walking, when you're eating, you can pray and communicate with God. Yes, my friends, everything you do, you can take an opportunity to communicate with our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. So I just want to remind you today, friends, the Bible says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I encourage you today, boys and girls, in every situation, in everything, lift up your hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the opportunity you provided for us to communicate with you through prayer. Bless us as we go throughout this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Over the years, we have had fun. Really good fun. Don't get me wrong, serious learning took place there too. The principals who followed Mr. Bourgeois, people like Pastor Fleury, Mr. Baxter Fanois, Mr. Finley, 
Mrs. Jeffrey, Mrs. Gemma Britton, and Mrs. Dakota, our present principal, have all kept on focused, kept the school on target. And today, I can beat my chest as a proud father. When I look back at all the positions my children have held in society, we have had doctors, nurses, administrative assistants, lawyers, principals, permanent secretaries, pastors, I can count about four, and one is our new president. Teachers, pilots, multiple police officers, contractors, immigration officers, and lately the speaker of the house, if you please. These children learned not only for school, but for life. I'm proud as punch. Now, don't feel I'm boasting only of worldly achievements. If you pay attention, you'll notice that all of these are service jobs. You see, we always encourage our children to give back, to do something for someone, to help someone in need. Not for vain selfishness, but to lighten someone's load. I'm so proud of the service my children have been rendering to society. But I've been talking a lot. Let me get a little wet throat and take a little rest. I'm a senior citizen now, you know. I'll check back in a bit later. I, that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt. Who am I, that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever-wandering heart? Because of who I am, but because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind still you. Hear me when I'm calling, Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours, I am yours. Who am I that the eyes have seen my sin would look on me with love? And watch me rise again. Who am I that the voice that calmed the sea would call out to the rain and calm the storm in me? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done. But because of who you are, I am a flower quickly fading, yet today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. Because of who I am, but because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, yet today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind still you. Hear me when I'm calling, Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. Who 
下来，别落下来，别。As we re reflect on our journey that has brought us to this momentous occasion, let us take a moment to acknowledge the dedication and commitment of all who had contributed to the success of our high school. From the visionary leaders and devoted faculty to the talented students and supportive community, each had played a vital role in shaping our school legacy of excellence. At this time, let us join our panel as they discuss this week's adult lesson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. This morning, the children have really blessed us with several items and some of the staff as well. I hope that you guys are enjoying wherever you are I'm seeing in the comments that we have some past students and some past staff. Happy Sabbath to you all. This week, our lesson was focused on the great controversy, or this quarter, our lesson will focus on the great controversy. And today, as we delve in, we want to begin by asking God to guide and lead everything that we say and do during the lesson. So I'm going to ask Mr. George to pray for us as we begin. Okay, let's bow our heads wherever we are as we pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for allowing us to be here this morning to discuss the great controversy, dear Lord, to discuss your love and the origin of sin. Father, as we discuss, we ask that every person watching, listening here will be enlightened and that they will be drawn into a deeper love, a deeper relationship with you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So while we discuss, we're inviting you to share your thoughts in the comments, and we will take from your contributions to add to our lesson. So this week's lesson introduces the topic of the cosmic conflict, or as we often refer to it, the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Now we shall begin the study by examining both the origin of evil and God's solution to humanity into the fall to sin. Now our focus scripture is Revelation 12, verse seven to eight, and it says, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war and they were not strong enough and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. So Mr. George, what were your initial thoughts when you went through this week's lesson? Well, today, especially in our present world, we hear about a lot of wars. Yeah. Um, currently, I mean, there are wars in almost every continent that you can think about. True. Even right here in the Caribbean, there's a sort of civil war in Haiti, you know, and as we relate what went on in heaven, mm -hmm. we think that, you know, war is something utterly, war is something man-made. But if we look right here, war began in heaven, it began with sin. Yeah. You know, the devil had pride in his heart, and that led to war. You know, which is similar to what we see even in our world today: greed, pride, all these things lead to, you know, nations fighting against other nations to take what they have. Yeah. You know, but it all started with Satan. Yes. You know, he didn't. He wasn't satisfied with what he had. Yeah. You know, he had. I mean. I would have liked to have half of what the devil probably had in heaven, you know, but yet for all, he wasn't satisfied with all this, mm -hmm. you know, and that's ultimately the source of all wars, yeah. you know, but again, as we would see, there's always a solution to what we see happening here in this world. Yeah. So this week, we began by looking at the origin of evil, and as Sir rightly said, the devil really is the source of this rebellion that has resulted in evil and sin. And our lesson goes in depth about how this actually came about. Now, some of you may know, and some of our guests online may not know, this might be brand new to you and you're hearing these things for the first time. Now, as Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that Lucifer was an angel created by God 
and he was given several liberties and powers and he was in heaven with all the other angels serving and worshiping God but then as Mr. George said he wasn't satisfied with that and it's that dissatisfaction that created the origin of sin now that came through a rebellion he gathered or tried to persuade several of the angels, right, one third specifically, to turn against God. He saw God as he is rightfully a powerful, omnipotent being, and that's what he wanted to be, or he wanted to be even more than that, right? And because of that desire within him to serve himself rather than to serve God, he his heart changed towards God and evil became existent. Now, Mr. George, what happened after that? Okay, so because of his sin, because of his evil, mm -hmm. you know, Satan was cast down and he came to earth, you know, and not satisfied with being the only one in sin, the only one probably who rejected God's love, you know, and the only one that, as you say, was greedy, prideful, you know, and he also had to spread his evil yeah. to us. Okay, mm -hmm. and that started with him tempting our first parents, Adam yeah. and Eve. Okay, and it went back to trust, you know. Yeah. Is what God said the best thing? Mm -hmm. Is what God said what is going to make um, Adam and Eve back then happy? You know, God said, if you eat of that tree, you will die. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, Eve... When the devil put that bit of doubt in her head, yeah. began lacking trust. Yeah. You know, she, I guess, began questioning, you know, who should I believe? Should I believe that serpent or should I believe the creator who has created me, who has shown me love, who has been there with me? Okay, and, you know, she mistrusts God and that brought sin not just to Adam and Eve, but to all of us in this world. You know, and many times we look back on Adam and Eve and say, well, Maybe if I was there, you know, um, <laughs> you'd yeah, have done differently. Would have done differently. Yeah. But the truth is, we all have the chance to do to do differently. And many times we do follow the um, path of our four parents, you know, yeah. and we make that choice not to actually trust God. Yeah. You know, instead we um, look upon God's love and say, well, either we do not, we reject it, or we say, well, God is so loving, then I would get away. God will forgive me. You know, yeah. and instead of actually trusting that, look, this is what God says, you know, this is the best way and following after him. And yeah. it all goes back to the devil's original sin. Yeah. So as we look at all of these scripture texts this week, we can see that everything that God created was perfect, right? He had no intention of it being broken or evil existing. Everything was exactly as it should have been. And he was the divine creator. So he knew how everything was supposed to work. But that perfection was broken. And it all came from one of the beautiful things that God created us with. Now, when God created us in our perfect selves, one of the things that he gave to us was freedom of choice. And just like the angels, they also had freedom, freedom of choice. And that was the gift that we misused to now say we will choose other than God. So Lucifer had freedom of choice. And he said, I'm not going to choose God and what he has given me. I'm going to choose self and what I want. And he wanted to be exalted above God. Now, the question is raised, why didn't God just get rid of Lucifer because he was the source of the problem. He was the origin of evil and we can all see how evil has affected us. God knew what would come out of the evil. So why not just get rid of Lucifer and go back to regular programming? Well, to be honest, it's a question that I always, you know, uh, wonder. Yeah. Um, it's a question I always thought, you know, maybe you know, why not just, you know, get rid of Lucifer? Um, probably the the um, the reason given is that, well, of course, the angels would see that as God being unjust, just as Satan claimed. Mm -hmm. You know, the next 
a solution that would pop in my head would probably why not just wipe their memories? You know, nobody remembers <laughs> Satan. No, I yeah. mean it's, it's realistic. It seems thinking, logical. Right? But the truth is, um, we go back to the fact that God is love, right? Um, Ellen White, you know, puts it plainly, the Bible puts it plainly in John, in first John, that God is love. And you know, with love, um, freedom of choice exists, right? Mm -hmm. Not without consequences though. Yeah. If you make a choice, of course, we have to face the consequence. And the consequence of sin naturally is death, right? Um, but to be loved, first of all, God had to actually not show his angels, his creation, that he is just like Satan, yeah. right? So in the claim that Satan made that, look, God is evil, God is not as loving as you think, if God had just destroyed him, some of the angels would have, you know, had that question in their mind, yeah. you know, forever, yeah. right? Now, in love, God cannot wipe the memory. It has mm -hmm. to be a choice that the angels have to make that, look, I'm going to choose to love God. Yeah. You know, amidst the accusation that the devil is making, I am going to love God. Yeah. You know, and it's the same for us here. Yeah. As sin spread, you know, we might wonder well, why. God didn't just, you know, um, probably quarantine Satan, right? But the truth is choice, right? Yeah. God had to allow him that choice to, you know, go to us. But eventually, as we would see, God always has a solution. And yeah. that began with sending his son Jesus to die for each and every one of us, yeah. you know, to provide that way out. But eventually, it has to be that we will make that choice. That to love God. Yeah. Personally, I think one of the things that I saw while studying was that God wanted to give us the opportunity to see Lucifer in full view. Because the rebellion that he had in heaven is nothing compared to the things that he did here. You know, they all add to his persona and his capabilities and how deeply rooted his desire to rule the world and overthrow God is. Right. And I think it would have been premature to, in a sense, if God had just taken that away from us, we would have never like we might have second guessed ourselves and say, you know, he's an angel. He made a mistake. Maybe we should show him grace. And um, he his heart isn't really to destroy the whole world. Like if we did not get the opportunity to see that God already knew how deeply set lucifer's desire was you understand yeah. he knew that he wanted to come in and he would do anything like take out the entire human race if he had to just to get the throne yeah. and while god knew that human beings didn't know that the other angels may not have known that and i think then when they had the war in comparison to now the angels who remain can see the lengths that Satan would go to to destroy and overthrow God. And I think it's giving us an opportunity to see what God saw beforehand because he knows everything, sure. yeah? yeah. Um, another question is, why allow Satan to come here? Why allow human beings the opportunity to even be entangled in Satan's web of rebellion. And yeah. it kind of goes back to the same thing of choice again. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, and an addition to it is, you know, um, there was sin in the world. And yeah. God was not going to immediately destroy Satan. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so the truth is, being exposed to sin and seeing the consequences, seeing um, the evil that it brought, seeing you know the death, the destruction, the wars, you know, the yeah. um, when we look at our world today, the you know the amount of atrocities that we see, you know, murder, rape, you know, um, trafficking of people, you know, several different crimes that we would see that mm -hmm. you know makes our heart, you know, some of them hot, yeah. right? Um, no, but when we look on these things, we should see it as the, the result of sin, right? Not just, for example, the um, result of just man's evil or so on, as, you know, it is would put it, um, 
um, evolutionary um, results of, you know, probably fighting for food or so. Yeah. But it is a result of sin. It's the result of what Satan brought. Yeah. And therefore, God saw what that sin would bring. Not just the evils, but also the attraction to it. Yeah. You know? Because as people, we do um, get ourselves, even Paul pointed it out, entangled with sin, and some sins may be hard for us to, you know, get rid of. Mm -hmm. But God wants it to always be about love for him. Right? True. God gave us these ways to live. Is it just about, I say do this, and, you know, nobody else do anything? Yeah. No, it's about love. It's about the best way to live. It's yeah. about the fact that when we live the way God tells us, we should see it as the way that would make us most happy here. Yeah. Right? First of all, and in heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? And in making that choice, when we do get to heaven, it would be a choice to be there. God wouldn't really have to wipe our minds off the sins that we committed here so that we don't want to commit them again. Because yeah. again, we still have to have freedom of choice. Yeah. Yeah. All right? So God wants us to make the choice for him. Right? Without Satan coming here or not, the original question, then it would not have really been a choice. Right? Yeah. If um, food is offered to me and say, well, you have a choice, chicken or chicken, there's no real choice. Here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there was the option of sin, but God wanted Adam and Eve to choose him. Yeah. Yeah. I also believe that in Satan's eyes, we were placed as the target because of the love and affection that God has for us as human beings. It says that we were created in his image and in his likeness. And as our original selves in the beginning, right, we were pure and we had stature and God had established everything that we needed and he loved us and that in Satan's eyes made us a good target yeah. because he was trying to be God and for him to be God he would have to create like God but he doesn't have that power so yeah. he would then have to take what God has created you understand and if he were taking that then why wouldn't he take God's prized possession like he True. couldn't probably take Michael, the angel, you understand, sure. who fought for God. And in some ways, he ended up, well, he thought he would have ended up taking Jesus. You understand? Sure. But that was not possible. Amen. But I think that is one of the reasons why he came here. Adam and Eve were attractive to him because they were kind of the apple of God's eye, for sure. the lack of a better term. Now, Wendy Duncan is saying, if we look at ourselves and the many times we have sinned, we would see that if God had destroyed us the very first time we would have sinned, we would not have experienced the loving, kind, compassionate, long-suffering love of God. And all of these are the characters of God, right? And Claudette is saying, that's when grace and mercy steps in from God. And you guys are so right. You Amen. understand? Now, Adam and Eve, they fell into sin. They had everything laid out for them. And Satan tried to put them, well, he got through in putting them in the same situation that he put himself in. He gave them the choice of choosing what they desired up as opposed to what God had laid out for them. Because he had what God had laid out for him and he chose what he desired. Now, if we look at the history of mankind, we would see that our situation is different from Lucifer's situation. Lucifer chose and he was thrown out. In our case, we were thrown out of the garden, yes, but God's love for us surpassed that, meaning we got a whole new world after sin had overtaken the world the first time. Amen. And then now again, Jesus has come to give us salvation. You understand? So unlike Lucifer, we were given opportunities to return to God and to become like what he intended for us to be. 
And I think that is another reason why Lucifer is going so hard to destroy humanity. What do you think? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, it's yeah. about jealousy, right? Yeah. Um, that's what began Lucifer's sin in the first place. Pride, mm -hmm. jealousy, you know, wanted to be God. And, you know, he saw that, you know, mankind does have, you know, we out of all this. He burnt his bridge, yeah. you know, and he's going to ensure that as much of us as possible are going to are not going to have that choice opportunity you know, like that opportunity that mm -hmm. we have you know so he's going to make it difficult for us you know he go, he's going to tempt us he's going to you know do as much you know damage that he can to us but we have to ensure that we are you know grounded we are protected we are covered yeah. by God yeah cuz in the first instance we got the flood the world yeah. was devastated by the sin that was going on then and God gave us a brand new slate True. and even though God put Adam and Eve out of the garden he was still with them you know our ancestors Moses Abraham God True. was still with them he was yeah. speaking Amen. to them he was giving them signs and you know giving them covenants between himself and them and that's something that Satan didn't get or wouldn't get and I believe it's because God knows the desires of his heart mm -hmm. right but for us we keep getting opportunity after opportunity and I think that we shouldn't take it for granted now John 17 24 to 26 says father I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am so that they may see my glory which you have given me for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them, and will make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. Now, when God found Adam and Eve in sin, he made a proclamation concerning the future of the human race, that there will be enmity between the woman seed and the serpent, and that they will bruise his head and he will bruise the heel of the child, right? And that yes. was foreshadowing Jesus' arrival and his death to give us salvation, yeah? And I think yes. sometimes we take it for granted how much God has given to actually bring us back to himself. Um, it's definitely not an easy task. We had to literally take life in order to be restored because the wages of sin is death. death yeah. yeah. And I think that human beings need to stop for a minute and recognize how much it is God is willing to give for us and if we were to notice that alone would help so many persons to actually accept Jesus Christ as their savior and be saved amen yeah so our knowledge of the great controversy as seven day adventists is one of the reasons why we feel so strongly about Jesus Christ and the love of God towards us because without it we would not have been in the knowledge of God in that way right now, one of the other questions that was posed to us this week is why do you think Christ sacrificed himself for us and what makes us so valuable to him? Again, you know, it goes back to the fact that God is love. He created each and every one of us, you know, and um, I mean, I'm not a parent, but for parents, they know the love that comes, you know, for yeah. their children, you know, and... God created us, and I believe that, you know, that love that he has, you know, in that he created us is more than anything else. And he saw us there. Yeah. You know, I ha heard the analogy as for a parent who saw the child did something uh, bad that they could not really, the child couldn't um, resolve it. You know, only the parent could. But in the fact that that, parent is you know involved with that child has that love for that child 
You know, they would do anything to actually save that child. And it's the same thing. God loves us. Yeah. He created us, you mm-hmm. know. And Revelation refers to the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay? And God seeing, he knowing exactly what was going to happen, had a plan in place. Okay? Yeah. Um, um, Romans 3, 23, I believe, says that the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal, eternal life. life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, so God planned, you know, that he's the only one that could have saved us. Right? Um, a man cannot die for us. Yeah. You know, Adam couldn't die for his sin. An angel couldn't die for our sins, yeah. right? Because only God that could have. And because of his love for us, he decided that he was going to, you know, die for us. He was going to make the ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us. Yeah. And, you know, because of that, it should be heartwarming to, you know, love God in return. You know, yeah. as the Bible says, um, we love him because he first loved us. Yeah. So online, I'm seeing that Claudette is saying, Satan had no thoughts about others, not even the angels that fought with him. It was all about himself. That's why in the passage, he said, I, about four times. You're right. All of his thoughts are self-centered. And because of that, he has to now lie to us in ways to convince us that, you know, he's right and God is wrong. True. But if we were really paying attention, we would see his intent. And I think that's why God has given us this time. Now, some people might say, well, we need to know evil in order to experience good. Do you believe that to be true? <laughs> Not really. I yeah. mean, I don't believe we have to know evil in order to experience good. Yeah. Um, it would be... I guess important to know that it exists. Mm -hmm. And because we know that it exists, in choosing good, you know, that makes it different. But in order to, I don't believe we have to know evil to to experience good. Um, It's again about choice. Yeah. I I would be perfectly fine if there was (laughs) no evil. True. Right? I would be perfectly fine without the evil. Um, We'd probably be in a garden somewhere enjoying ourselves. But unfortunately, that's not where we're at. And because we know evil, we need to recognize it for what it is. So as simply as I can put it, evil is when you choose something outside of God. And the other option is God. So you're choosing something in opposition of God. And you don't, a lot of it doesn't feel like evil. But if we go according to that definition, I think we would be able to see all the ways that God has stipulated for us to remain in good and not go to evil. Because everything about him is rooted in love. Like God is literally love. Anytime we step out of God or we go against God, whether it's a small rebellion or a big rebellion, it's evil. It's rooted in evil. Right. So God has given us several things to help guide us, to help save us. He gave us his son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation and to save us from death. He has left us with the Holy Spirit so that we can be empowered in ways that in our own strengths, we would not be empowered. Right. So he has given us everything that he could have given us to help us go through this life and wait for his second coming. He has made sure that we have his power to stand against the devil and what he has the power to do here on earth. So we need to recognize that. And sometimes I feel like we put the devil on a pedestal. We put Satan on a pedestal. Like, you know, he is God's equal. And that is the biggest lie of them all. True. Because he does not have the power that God has. He's not omnipotent the way that God is omnipotent. He's not omniscient the way that God is omniscient. He's not omnipresent either. Sometimes we say, you know, the devil did this and the devil did that, but he can't be everywhere. No. He cannot be everywhere True. every time. Amen. Right? 
So we need to recognize those things and we need to acknowledge that he is not God. Sometimes I feel like we empower him way more than he is powerful. True, true. We put him, <laughs> and we need to know. stop, right? Yeah. So just to recap for our lesson this week, there are several aspects of the cosmic conflict that merit our consideration. The first would be the great controversy is not perpetual. It originated in heaven when Lucifer create a created being he headed a band of rebel angels who challenged God the eternal creator and the king of all beings. Thus, we can surmise that if evil and the devil had a beginning, they will certainly have an end. And secondly, the cosmic conflict shows the radical in incompatibility of good with evil. Neither party can coexist with or tolerate the other. Each group yearns for the existence of sorry, the extinction of the other. When evil came into existence, it challenged the very idea of God's right to exist and rule, notwithstanding the eternal nature of God. Further, the great controversy eliminates any form of philosophical or religious dualism in which both evil and good are co-eternal, co-equal, or necessary. The biblical worldview clearly excludes the necessity of evil. We do not need evil in order to know and appreciate what is good, nor is evil necessary to increase our good. And I think from those lessons, we can say that God has it under control. Amen. Yeah? Amen. If anything else wasn't telling you that, you know, God knows what he's doing, this lesson should have brought that into perspective. God has everything under control and his plan is going according to plan. So we need to stop, we need to trust God, and we need to make sure that we are taking all of the things that he has given us so that we can rejoin him into the plans that he has for us where no evil exists and there is no more Satan. Do you have any final words? Amen. Yeah, just to you know reiterate the point that while evil exists, you know, God is love, Amen. and he has a way of, it started with the cross, and we just have to accept the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross. Amen. Thank you so much for your comments online. We were reading while we were discussing, and yes, you guys are right on point. He has no credit whatsoever, and he is not the creator. God is the creator. So let's bow our heads and pray as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love towards us. We thank you so much for all the provisions you have made for us, the blessings that you have poured out on us, the death of your Son that has given us salvation. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have sent so that we will not be defenseless against the wiles of the devil. Dear God, we accept the power that you have given us. We accept the salvation that you have given us. We accept the love that you pour out on us. And we will, in return, live lives that show our gratefulness towards you for everything that you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Just like the great controversy, it has not always been a bed of roses. The revolution came and we were impacted. You see, up to that point, we were under the full management of my grandparents, the Caribbean Union Education Department. But as the revolution went on, the management structure changed and we became wards of the state. The Ministry of Education has taken an active role in our daily affairs. You know, there is a lot of debate about where my loyalties lie, whether with the church or with the state. But remember, we endeavor to impart a balanced spiritual, intellectual, physical, social, and aesthetic education to our students, thus preparing them for efficient service here and in eternity. This drives what we do. We are told that without vision, people perish. So we have committed our path to the Lord and pray for his guidance. Now, this change hasn't prevented my children from learning of God and his will in their lives. 
they still have Bible teaching every day. They still have a chapel on Friday mornings. We have a week of prayer each term, and our children are still given opportunities to lead and to be leaders. We feed the church. They are still directed to lead upon to lean upon God to sustain them when trials come. So, they may not be the best behaved as of now, but we claim the promise, train up a child in the way he should go, and that when he is old, he will not depart from it. As educators, my staff believe in incorporating Christian values in all aspects of our work. And we encourage everyone to do the same. Unfortunately, we know that for many of the children in our care, we may not be the only source of guidance and wisdom in their lives. Therefore, as in times past, we call on the family and humbly request that our church community and extended family members keep the children and families of our school lifted in their daily prayers. We ask for prayers. Pray that we continue as a school to have faith in God, to see us through. You see, things may be bad now, but there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Amen? We will now listen to one of our past students, Brother Jamal Belfon, a student and pastor in training. As you listen, online viewers who are past students, please share what you graduated from our school and a memory of the way God worked in the life when you were a student. Hello everyone, I am Jamal Belfon, a current student at the University of the Southern Caribbean, and I am an alumnus of the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School, a magnificent institution. My educational experience there at that secondary school institution was nothing far from great. It was an excellent experience. I was engaged in lots of extracurricular groups. I made lots of school a magnificent institution my educational experience there at that secondary school institution was nothing far from great it was an excellent experience i was engaged in lots of extracurricular groups i made lots of friends and that helped me or gave me a foundation to the young man that i am today firstly a benefit, the most important benefit to me that I would like to share in this testimony is the Adventist Christian education. Truth is, I, I, I was seeking to see how I can be a better young Christian for Christ. And having role models as my teachers who were Seventh-day Adventists, practicing and living the... Adventist doctrine in which I desired to pattern my life after was very beneficial. And that helped me to grow and become a better Christian. Not just the live role models or the real role models, but our Bible classes, the week of prayers, and every, every biblical initiative that the church would have, um, or rather the school, 
would have engaged in. Now, I also engaged in some of and were participants of some of those biblical and evangelistic initiatives from the school. I was a preacher for a week of prayer. I would have sung for song service. And the Grenada Ezio Comprehensive School was a very important factor and an and organization that participated in the youth life program of our conference. And I was one of the students who was there consecutively, and that helped me to grow as a person. I was involved in lots of extracurricular groups, such as the debate club, Young Leaders. And I must say that, that because of my involvement, especially in the debate club, I am now a fairly okay public speaker. I'm, I'm still growing as a public speaker. But I must say that I developed skills that I'm still using today at the university. I host programs, I do presentations, and uh, the foundation for this ability was from the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School. I am on the praise team here at USC, and I must say, being a part of the choir, I learned a few skills. I learned a few skills, and because of that involvement, the praise team leader here, and even we were recently speaking about that, after she heard me sing the first time, she came and asked me to join the praise team because of the skills that I learned and developed as being a part of the choir at the school. At the school, I must say that I gained lots of friends, and not just friends in students, but friends in teachers. <laughs> Me and my teachers, most of us, we had some very great, strong relationships. And even today, I am getting motivations and encouragements from those teachers, and we are still friends. Even my decision and, and to accept God's call for my life was influenced by my teachers back then in secondary school and my principal. So I must say that the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School is a magnificent institution. In this testimony, I would like to highlight that I developed lots of skills that I used while I was working and that I'm using here at USC. And the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School was the foundation of who I am today. Thank you so much, Brother Jamal. Oh, yes, it has been a good walk down memory lane. I will now pause for a bit of rest. I am 65 after all. As I do so, I do it with a feeling of gratitude, pride, and unity, values that have defined our school for the past 65 years. I solicit your prayers, prayers that will continue to uphold the values and traditions that have guided us thus far. As we embark on the next chapter of our journey together, your support will be integral to our survival. Pray for us. Pray with us and pray for the families who send their precious children to us to be educated and spiritually fed. Prayer changes things. So until next time, the old man is off to get some rest. Bye. Greetings, everyone. We are into the new month in the year 2024. April is here. God continues to lead us as we ascribe all the praise to him. The Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists is happy that you have joined us today for our session of praise and worship to the Almighty God. Here are the announcements for this week. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their lands. 2 Chronicles 7.14 that is one reason we are all called to pray in the morning, pray in the noontime, and pray in the evening. Remember to join us for special prayer sessions on the National Zoom platform on Saturdays at 6 a.m., on Sundays and Thursdays at 12 noon, and on Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. More prayer, more power. Can we remember that today, Sabbath, April 6, 2024, is set aside as a quarterly day of prayer for the second quarter of 2024. Today, let us spend more time in prayer. 
Additionally, the Prime Minister's Department is pleased to announce that the much-anticipated Caribbean Union Press Summit will be held during the period 2nd to the 4th of August 2024 at the University of the Southern Caribbean in Trinidad. Prayer expert and renowned speaker Pastor Pavel Goya from the General Conference and Dr. Samuel Telemach, the esteemed prayer coordinator of the Inter-American Division, will be the key presenters at this summit. Administrators, directors, pastors, elders, prayer intercessors, leaders and members can attend this summit. Persons who desire to attend this summit must register. Please see the letter that was sent to each congregation or contact the conference office for more details on this summit. It will be great. The Grenada Conference of 70 Adventist online giving platform is back up and functioning. Take note and you can get ready to use this platform if you desire. But please let your family and friends in the diaspora know that it is up and functioning again. Let them know that they can log in and give their financial gifts towards the work of God. Please stay tuned to this platform for more details and instruction on how to access and use our online giving platform. Good news. The Caribbean Union Conference Stewardship Ministries Department will be offering a 16-week online stewardship instructors certification program. Commences on Tuesday, April 9, 2024 and is projected to conclude on Tuesday, July 30, 2024. At the end of the training, participants will be certified in stewardship instruction. All our first elders, stewardship secretaries, church officers and other interested persons are encouraged to be a part of this training. Registration will end soon, so get registered by calling the conference office and speak to Sister Reynold Bridgman. See the letter that was sent to the churches for more details about this program. The Personal Ministries Department of our conference would like to bring the following to our attention. Personal ministry leaders are encouraged to ensure that all the members and guests who have signed up to be a part of the All Families in Mission initiative are registered on the assigned portal. Please give this matter your urgent attention. If you need more details, please see the recent letter that was sent out concerning this matter or you can call the Personal Ministry Director for a conference for any assistance. In partnership with the Health Ministries Department, there will be an upcoming training session for all community services members in the areas of medical missionary and prayer deliverance ministry. More details will be sent to you soon. There will be a special relaunch of the I Care So I Share program and the Name I Skills group this Sabbath, April 6, 2024, 3.30 p.m. at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Paradise St. Andrew. Kindly submit the names and contact information of all tradesmen and volunteers within your local congregation as quickly as possible to the Community Services Department of our conference. Each congregation is encouraged to elect a possibility ministry leader to help minister to the needs of persons living with various physical and other challenges. Also, please send to the conference office all persons with special needs within your congregation so that a viable registry can be developed. Additionally, please note that there will be free sign language classes starting on April 7, 2024 on the Zoom platform. Registration forms will be available shortly. In the meantime, you can call and register your interest with Sister Melissa Williams at the conference office. The Health Ministries Department is pleased to bring the following to your attention. The Health Department will be hosting a Health Evangelism Empowerment Weekend during the period April 19th to the 21st, 2024 under the theme Energized and Evangelized Your Health Matters. This Empowerment Weekend is for all health secretaries, health missionaries, health professionals, caregivers, and other interested persons. The following are the dates and venues for the various programs. Friday, April 19th at 7 p.m., Concord Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sabbath, April 20th at 9 a.m. to sunset, Annual Health Convention at the current Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our Carol Health Ministries Director, Dr. Alexander Isaacs, will be the main facilitator for the training and speaker at the convention. 
Sunday, April 21st at 9 a.m. to 12 midday, a practical hands-on session, the interpretation and application of findings at the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School Auditorium at Mount Rose, St. Patrick. The aim for the weekend's program is to understand why we do what we do in effectively reaching others with the health reform message as the entering wage of the gospel. Looking forward to seeing you there. The Seventh-day Adventist Primary School at Mount Rose St. Patrick's will host its special awards night, dinner, and music event on April 28th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Please give your support to this special event. For more details, please see the promotional flyer that has been circulated or call the school for more information. Your support will be greatly appreciated. Please continue to support the Eric Charles Memorial Home at Diamond St. Mark with your finances, materials, and prayers. For more information about how you can contribute to this home, please call telephone numbers 444-9389 or 533-3111 or email us at charlesmemorialhm at gmail.com. We look forward to your generous contributions. Continue to join us for our regular online services and programs on Mission Life GND via Facebook and YouTube. Adventist Youth Service this afternoon at 4 p.m., Sunday evening evangelistic service at 7 p.m., Pastor's Corner on Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. with a rebroadcast at 8 p.m., Adventist Youth Live and Blog or Pastor's Corner on Friday at 7 p.m., Sabbath online service at 9 a.m. The Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists expresses heartfelt thanks to all of you, our members and friends, for your support of all the programs that were held during the past week, namely the annual Pathfinder Campery, the Special Education Offering, the All Family in Mission Program, your generous contributions to the Eric Charles Memorial Home at Diamond, and other initiatives or projects of our conference. All the services and programs that were held on Mission Live via Facebook and YouTube. We solicit your continued support for the events and programs to come in the future. You are a very important partner in what we do and we value your attendance, participation, support and contribution. Thanks again for joining us today. The Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists wishes you and your families all the best for the new week ahead. May God's richest blessings attend you and your family today and beyond. Enjoy the rest of the day and the upcoming week. The early education of youth generally shapes their character for life. Day by day, they are all trained to be disciplined and educated for usefulness in this life and prepared for the hereafter. Today, I remind you that this is the vision and mission of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education in Grenada, to restore in our children the image of God as they seek to achieve spiritual, mental, and physical balance. Adventist Christian education is a journey to excellence. As education director, I am very pleased to be associated with the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School, our only secondary school here in Grenada. As we feature the life of our school in today's program, we acknowledge that we have come this far by faith, providing secondary education in Grenada for 65 years with a present enrollment of 310 students and 25 teachers. Let us continue to support our school as we seek to aid the students in comprehending these principles. We learn not for school, but for life. And in entering that relation with Christ, which should be the teacher's first effort and his constant aim a laborer together with God. We salute all our past and present principals, teachers, and students. May Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School stand as a beacon of hope in the community. And as she shines her light, many more students who enter her walls will be blessed. God bless you.
it's time for us to sing. And as of first, praise and worship, we're singing 469, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. We're doing it the AY style. Oh, no. 
every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take.
as we reflect on the journey that has brought us to this milestone, let us acknowledge the dedication, sacrifice, and resilience of all who have contributed to the growth and success of the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School. From our founding members and administrators to our current facility, staff, and students, each has played a vital role in shaping our school identity and impact. Sister Janelle Sween will now share a, sto a story for the younger ones among us. Hi, boys and girls. I just went for a ride. Do you guys like my bike? Well, for me, I'm just learning to ride. Can you ride a bike? There's another little girl I know who is also learning to ride. Now, she has a really interesting story. Do you want to hear it? Full sunny day. Hannah and her brother Joey ate lunch quickly because their parents had promised to take them on a bike ride that afternoon. Hannah had been riding without her training wheels for a couple of days and was excited to go on a real bike ride like her big brother. After what felt like forever, everyone was ready to go. They rode around their neighborhood and were having a great time. Hannah was doing a great job. She was following her dad and had no trouble pedaling her bike up the small hills they rode on. She was having a blast. The family began to turn the corner and head for home. As soon as she was around the corner, Hannah used her brakes and then put her feet on the ground, stopping her bike as fast as she could. She looked in front of her and saw that she was at the top of a hill, a very long hill that looked like it went on forever. Her eyes got huge and she began to feel very small. Hannah's mom, dad and Joey kept riding and were halfway down the hill before her mom noticed she wasn't with them anymore. Hannah's mom rode back up the hill to Hannah and stopped alongside her. What's wrong, Hannah? Her mom asked. I'm not going down that hill. I think I want to walk my back down. Hannah said. Her eyes were filling up with tears and her hands started shaking a little bit. She was scared. But Hannah, you know how to ride and you know how to use your brakes. You'll be fine, her mom said. Hannah sat on her bike and shook her head. There was no way she was going to go down that hill riding her bike. Hannah's dad rode back up the hill and joined Hannah and her mom. He saw the tears in Hannah's eyes and he could tell she was scared. What's going on? he asked. That, steep, that hill is too steep, Daddy. I don't want to go down it, Hannah said. But Hannah, you were doing so well on your bike. We're almost home. I know you can do it. Just use your brakes like I taught you, Hannah's dad said. Hair started rolling down Hannah's face. What if she went too fast, she thought. What if she crashed because she couldn't brake and stop her bike? She felt like she was too scared to move. Hannah's mom got off her bike and came and stood next to Hannah. Hannah, we know that you can do this. We wouldn't make you do something that you weren't ready to do. How about I stand next to you? and keep my hand on the seat of your bike. I won't let you fall. Hannah's hands were still shaking. Tears were still in her eyes, and she was still scared. But, she thought, I know that my mom won't let me fall. She is bigger and stronger than me, and I know she doesn't want me to get hurt. Hannah's mom knelt alongside Hannah and wiped away the tears on her cheek. You know that I love you and that you can trust me, Hannah. How about we ride down to that tree and then stop? She pointed to a tree a little way away. Hannah looked at her mom, then she looked at the tree. She was still scared, 
but she trusted her mom and after a minute Hannah nodded her head. Hannah's mom put on her hand on the bike seat. Hannah put her feet on the pedals and started down the hill. She wobbled a little as she pedaled, but after a few seconds, she was by the tree her mom had pointed at. She braked just like her dad had taught her and stopped right next to it. Hannah could hear her dad cheering from the top of the hill and Joey cheering from the bottom of the hill. She had done it. Hannah, I'm so proud of you, her mom said. You trusted me and I know that I wouldn't let you fall. Let's see if we can make it the rest of the way down the hill together. Hannah smiled up at her mom. She wasn't crying or shaking anymore. In fact, she was starting to have fun again. How was Hannah able to make it down the hill? Well, she could trust and rely on her parents to help her get down the Does this remind you of anything? In the Bible, it tells us that we could trust and rely on Jesus to take us safely through any situation. And did you notice that once Hannah could get down the small part of the hill, then she was also able to get down the larger part of the hill? Well, this tells us that we, once we trust and rely on God to get us through the small thing, He could help us to get us through the bigger thing. Hebrews 13, 5-6 says, For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Boys and girls, Jesus is riding alongside us, holding the seat as we ride the bike of God. Give and it will come back to you is a song we often sing. It is now time for giving back to God. Okay, I'd like to thank all those who have given and who will give today. I'd like to encourage everyone, the viewers and listeners, that you can give via the QR code on your screen along with the link posted in the chat. Okay, it is always good to give to God. You can also contact the conference office where you can give via your envelope. And please feel free to give at your local church as well. At this time, let's bow heads as we pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings upon us. We thank you for life, health, and strength, dear Lord. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to earn, to earn financial blessings, to earn other blessings, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the hours of the day, Lord, that you have given us to work, Lord. And we pray that as we have given back to you of our financial blessings, of our time, the Lord, we pray that you will bless it, Lord. Help that it will be used for the furtherance of your gospel so that men and women can learn to of you, to love you, and to serve you, dear Lord. We also pray that we will also give back of all ourselves to you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Remind me once again just who I am because I need 
Our school's chaplain is an integral part of our school committee. Chaplain Pastor Gittins will bring us to the throne of grace. Following this, our school choir will again bless our hearts. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 35 to 42. And it says, And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pens and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Now it came to pass, as they went, then he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? God and Father, of our we thank you ever so much for such a special Sabbath. And when we are celebrating the existence of our school, uh, GSACS, the related Seven Day Adventist Comprehensive School, God, we pause because we are so grateful today uh, that this school has been in existence for so many decades. Uh, God, uh, we pause and remember the text that says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. For we know that this noble institution has been involved in training children for so long. Uh, many of these individuals have graduated and they have found themselves meaningfully employed in various uh, areas in life uh, right here in this country and all over the world. We thank you, O oh Father. Uh, God, we pray today in a special way that you protect this noble institution. Uh, be with the principal and staff and all workers uh, in this school, I pray. Uh, be with the surrounding community, uh, that communities that feed children into this school on a daily basis. I ask for the safety of these children as they ply their way from home to school on a daily basis. I also ask, O oh God, even as exam time is soon to approach, O oh Father, uh, that you uh, grant them wisdom and understanding from an eye. For you said that if any lack wisdom, uh, they must ask of God that give it to all liberally. So God, please empower these children with wisdom and understanding and uh, with good memory so that they would be able uh, to do their external exams in a successful way, I pray. God, we understand that our school GSDACS is a light to this part of the community. May this light shine brilliantly and may uh, it influence uh, lives all over the world, I pray. Father, uh, there are individuals, children who from time to time have come to week of prayer and spiritual emphasis uh, week and they have made decisions to follow you, to be baptized and to go all the way with you. Help that those individuals who have made those decisions, uh, may they stand firm. And those who are in the valley of decision, uh, may they make up their mind uh, to live for you and you alone. Oh God, I ask that you be with uh, the presenter today, uh, the preacher, 
help that the message of salvation may go out loud and clear and your word would not return unto you void that it but that it will accomplish something great in the lives of individuals oh father again i beg of you forgive us of our sins cleanse us from all unrighteousness wash us make us clean and protect and provide for our institution and may it be continue to be a beacon of light to that part of the community here in grenada i pray in jesus name amen and amen amen When you search an easy thing for you to do Your hand is moving right now You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus Your voice is calling me out Right now, I know you're able my God will come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. I know, I know, you never will. is mine this morning to introduce the speaker. He is no stranger to any of us, having served in this conference for many years. He has served as a district pastor, 
then as the youth director, as the ministerial secretary, and he now holds the position of president and manager of our school. But above all, of all the accolades that I've given, I am most proud to say he is a past student of the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School. This morning, I ask that you tune your hearts and your minds to the messages that God has sent through his manservant, Pastor Enoch Isaac, as he now brings to us a word from the Lord. Thank you. This is the quote for your kind words of introduction. I am delighted to be sharing with you this morning and a pleasant good morning to all our listeners and viewers over there in TV land and in Facebook land and um, YouTube land, wherever you are and you're listening to us, um, hearing us, we are delighted that you are, have tuned in and you continue to tune in and support Mission Life. Um, this morning, I am happy to be part of this experience. Um, if you have been following, you have been following what the school have been doing. And um, yes, as was just said by the principal, uh, Grenada SDA Comprehensive School is my alma mater. I walk through, that is, exit the doors of the school um, some 38 years ago. Now, that's a long time. Um, I can recall, and I think um, they, they're listening at this time, I can recall teachers like Brother Lytton Harry, um, and of course, and his wife, Sister Wilma Harry, um, teaching literature. That's um, Mr. Harry, 101, um, you know, and his expression, I still remember it. All these years, I still remember it. Big dog, bitterroot. You know, ho, 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 Treasure Island. I remember that. Um, had teach, of course, you know, I think, I'm not quite sure, but didn't ask the principal, but she has been there for a little while. It's good for stability. But in my time, you know, those, those five, six years, we had, you know, it was turbulent time. That was revolution time. We had changing principles. So I had a, a stint with um, about three or four principals. Um, you know, then Pastor Flair, you know, was a principal for a short time. Um, Mrs. Odell, I think she, someone told me she passed last year. She served for, as a principal during that time for a short time. And I think when I, as I left, we had a little stability. We had um, Mrs. Jeffrey um, serving as principal. And I wondered in my mind as I was coming down if one um, Mr. Kapu didn't serve for a short time. Um, maybe so, but, but these, those were the days. Um, Ms. The current education director, um, you know, uh, Mrs. Bola, yeah, um, she taught for me for one subject, principles of business. I, I, uh, Mr. Philip, George Philip from Victoria, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of agriculture. Maybe I learned it from Mr. Philip. Well, learned the practical. He taught me agriculture. And um, Mrs. McLeish, no, Dr. McLeish, um, taught me biology. So these are some fun memories from, from you know, my alma mater. And um, it's good that we continue the journey. So I'm happy to share with you today in keeping with your theme. Um, we've come this far by faith. I've, I've decided to speak to you um, under the caption, Real Education, What Does It Entail? Let's pray. Father, even as I speak now, may your Holy Spirit and your anointing descend upon this place, descend upon me. Bless your, your viewers and listeners, wherever they might be. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight is my prayer in Jesus' name. Real education, what does it entail? You know, today, when we consider the subject of education and learning, we can hardly crystallize the thought in any particular direction. For instance, 
Oftentimes, young people are told, you should go to school and get a good education. But what does that really mean? Maybe, maybe we mean, I say we because, you know, the older ones, they tell the young persons, go to school and get a good education. Maybe we mean go to school and graduate with, graduate with 12 um, CXC passes and, and get, get 12 A's. Go to school and, 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 and be the island scholar for National College and, or TAMCC. Um, go, go to university and, and graduate magna cum laude. Maybe, maybe. Um, but, but does that constitute real education? Our church has come a long way in its pursuit of holistic education. Our primary school at Mount Rose has been in existence for almost 114 years. That's a very, very long time. Our, our, our primary school in St. George's has been in existence for over 50 years. Now that's, you know, having, to having been shaping minds down at the south for over 50 years, that is tremendous. And as you have heard, you must have heard earlier this morning, for the last 65 years, for the last 65 years, the, the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School has been shaping hearts and minds here in this country. And as was said, and I, as I intimated, I am one of the product of the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School. I'm, I'm, I'm very delighted and happy to say that. So we have come this far by faith. However, as we move forward, we must be determined to ensure that real education, the education that we offer, is holistic in nature. Indeed, our philosophy of education must supersede the mere attainment of academics. I repeat that. Our philosophy of education must supersede the, the mere attainment of academics. We must go beyond that. It means more. It means more than a preparation of this life. It, mo it has to do more with the preparation of the life to come. That is real education. One of my favorite authors, Ellen G. White, writing in her book, Education, on page 13, she says, referring to describing education, she says that it is, it is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and spiritual powers. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and for, higher, and for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. Ellen White says, real education prepares someone for this life and the life to come. This is very important. And, and the late civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. I repeat, Martin Luther King Jr. once said that the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, he says, that is the goal of true education. Did you get this? Martin Luther, I agree with him. It's, 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 it's a fabulous quote. Intelligence plus character is the true goal of education. What is Martin Luther saying here? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you, 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 it's, it's, no, it's useless to say it's a very, he's a very intelligent student, but he's, a, he's crooked. It, it's, 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 it's useless to say, oh, she's, she's beautiful and she's, she's a bright person, but she's a harlot. Ah, uh, intelligence plus character is the true goal of education. So the, we, we should not be uh, applauding an intelligent cook. No, 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 no. That is not in the book of Martin Luther, and I, and I so agree with it. Because real education deals with intelligence, not just, not just, not just IQ, it deals with EQ. <laughs> yes, your emotional intelligence coupled with your, with your IQ. Uh, that is real education. So here I'm suggesting this morning that there is no real education outside of Jesus. Hear me now. There is no real education outside of Jesus. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 9 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
Did you hear that? The fear of the Lord. If, you're, if you think you're educated and you don't respect God, if you think you're educated but you don't have God in your, in your thinking, um, something is wrong because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Real education is wrapped up and tied up in knowing and living the principles of Jesus. I repeat, real education is wrapped up and tied up in knowing the principles of Jesus. The word of God, the Bible. The word of God, the Bible supersedes the value of any other textbook. I want you to, I want you to get this. The word of God, that, that is the Bible, it supersedes the textbook that we get info for our physics and our and our chemistry and our mathematics and our biology. Yeah, the word of God supersedes that. So we can't really talk about education until we start talking about values and morality and Christian ethics. Um, I, mean, I mean, there is no real education when there, are no, when there is no teaching on values and, and about morality. And by the way, morality deals with what is right and what is wrong. That is morality. And if we're not teaching that, then something is wrong. There, there is no real education. Um, if we're not teaching values and morality and then Christian ethics, Christian ethics deals with what is appropriate in any given situation. What is the right thing to do in any, in any given situation? That is re real education. You know, for our scripture reading today, there, it talks about two women, two sisters, well, and a brother. One sister name was Martha. The, the other was Mary. Now the Bible tells us maybe, not maybe, we let, let, let's go to that passage there in Luke chapter 10. And I'm reading you here in verse 38 to 42. Luke chapter 10, the Bible says, reading from verse 38, the Bible says, No, it came to pass as they went that he... That's as they, that is Jesus and his disciples, as they went, that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into a house. Verse 39 says, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But but, but, but Martha was cumbered about much servings and, and, and came to him, that's Jesus, and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Watch this now, verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Like he said to Peter, Peter. Thou art careful and troubled over many things. Watch this. Watch this in verse 42. Jesus is concluding. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, now Mary was, by the way, don't get it wrong. Mary was doing a very good part. Entertaining Jesus. I mean, Jesus came to a home. In fact, that was a home that Jesus would often stop by. Whenever Jesus passes by Bethany, he would stop by that home. We have no knowledge of the parents. Maybe they died because there were three siblings, Martha and Mary and Lazarus. On that occasion, when Jesus came by, Martha was in the kitchen and she was preparing some stuff. I don't know what she was giving Jesus that day. Maybe... Oh, maybe she was giving some stew gluten. I don't know. But, but something tells me, even if she did that, help me, Holy Ghost. She had some other stuff for Jesus. And so, so maybe she had some big fish. Jesus loved fish. You don't know that? Jesus loved fish. So, so maybe she had some big fish here and, and, and roasted fish. Oftentimes, you read the Bible, you see Jesus roasting fish on the, on the shores of, the, uh, of Galilee. So maybe she knew Jesus loved fish. So she was giving Jesus a, you know, a, a good choice, some fried jacks maybe, I don't know. But, but she was preparing stuff for Jesus and, and maybe some yam pie and you know, 
some 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 kind of stuff she was giving Jesus and 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 she felt and 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 then she had to take care of the juice maybe some ginger and some sorrel and some mango juice and that kind of thing and 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 Jesus was speaking out there and her sister Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and she said to Jesus come on Jesus you know I'm preparing stuff for you you know I like to entertain my guests and could you ask your could you ask my sister? She's just sitting there listening to you. Could you ask her to, 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 to come and give me some kind of assistance? And, the, you know, the, the response of Jesus is quite interesting. Jesus said, Martha, Martha you are troubled. You, you, are, you are quite occupied. I appreciate what you're doing for me. But your sister is sitting in my class. I wish you somebody you know, in YouTube and Facebook, you can type amen if you agree with that. You, you know, you, 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 your, your sister is sitting in my class. She's in my school. She's learning from me. And that's the best thing that she can do. And that's the best thing that anybody can do. I say praise the name of the Lord. Because what, what Mary has chosen, it shall not be taken away from her. One thing is profitable, says Jesus. An education, a life without Jesus is wasteful living. An accomplishment without Jesus is scandalous living. There is a song which says, sitting at the feet of Jesus, oh, what words I hear him say. Happy place so near, so precious, may it find me there is each day that's at the feet of Jesus sitting at the feet of Jesus where can mortal be more blessed at the feet of Jesus there I lay my sins and sorrow and find and and find rest when I'm weary brothers and sisters Mary knew that the blessings that she needed was was only found at the feet of Jesus Mary knew that, 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 that at the feet of Jesus, there she can find forgiveness. Mary knew that at the feet of Jesus, then she can learn real morals and real values at the feet of Jesus. She knew that the inner satisfaction that she, that she craved can only be found at the feet of Jesus. You know, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen out there, you can graduate magna cum laude. But if you have not been in the school of Christ, you are still destitute of real education. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. She was not satisfied with being in the same house with Jesus. That, that was Mary. No, she, she was in the same house with Jesus, but she wanted to go beyond that. She wanted something more. She wanted a, a real connection with Jesus. And this morning I'm submitting that our education has to go more than mere attendance of church. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, oh, uh, you know, sometimes you say, I, I know Jesus. You know, Jesus and I tight. We do our own thing. But you're saying, you know, Jesus, I know Jesus and Jesus and I, we have a good thing, but we are disobedient to Jesus. I'm saying real education means listening to the voice of Jesus. You see, friends, at the feet of Jesus, we will be reminded that thou shalt not covet thy neighbors. You see, when we, when we don't sit at the feet of Jesus, we, we don't understand these things. But when we sit at the feet of Jesus, we will be reminded that we shouldn't covet our neighbors, whatever belongs to our neighbors. The neighbor's cell phone, the neighbor's intellect, the neighbor's good name and character. Listen to me, when we decide to slander people, we are coveting their good name. We, we think that they're too good, so we, 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 we want to slander them and we're trying to take away their good name. So don't read the Bible and, and, and read it in a street jacket you say thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house and thy neighbor's wife you say me i ain't coveting nobody's wife i'm not coveting anybody's house well it can be something else than that yes it could be it could be the person's intellect the person's job you anything the bible says anything that is thy neighbor's we're at the feet of jesus we learn not to do that at the feet of jesus watch this watch this at the feet of jesus we'll remind it that that by our words we are justified and by our words we are condemned. So that being the case, we have to be careful what we post on Facebook and what we put on Instagram. Because, because, because at the feet of Jesus, we'll know what to put, what to post and what to say about people, what not to say. At the feet of Jesus, children will be reminded that the Bible says that children must obey the parents in the Lord. And if children, for, if children are to obey the parents, they must spend some time sitting at the feet of Jesus. I wish I had 
children listening on and, 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 and understanding that there is no blessing for disobedient children. At the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus. Husbands will know that they are required to love their wives and wives will know that they have to respect their husbands. At the feet of Jesus. Yes, at the feet of Jesus. You know, you know, at the feet of Jesus, you will learn that God hates divorce. I repeat, at the feet of Jesus, you would know that God hates divorce. The Bible says in Malachi 2, 16, I hate divorce. Now don't get me wrong. Jesus talked about divorce in Matthew chapter 19. And he gives a reason where divorce can be allowed. But we're living in a time where people want to divorce for anything. They just, they just, they just, they just get fed up and they say, I'm divorcing. But, but if, you, if you spend time at the feet of Jesus, you'll know that God says, I hate divorce. So husband and wives should know that. Husbands must love their wives. That's what the Bible says. Husbands, love your wife. Treat your wives. If you are educated at the feet of Jesus, you'll know that the word of God requires you to love your wives. And wives, respect your husbands. That's what the word of God teaches. At the feet of Jesus. And by the way, if your spouse, if your spouse is not a, as attractive as, as, as she used to be, or your, your spouse is not attractive as he used to be, or handsome as he used to be, it's a good time to sit at the feet of Jesus. Because you see, if you're not sitting at the feet of Jesus, your eyes shall begin to wander. But sitting at the feet of Jesus, you'll understand it doesn't matter. You know, you know um, um, it, it, it really doesn't matter because age brings on different, you know, um, uh, if I should say deterioration in the body, that's how life is. Sin has caused that. So we will not always remain as a spring chicken, you know, 16. No, we will age. But, 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 but sitting at the feet of Jesus, we learn to love our wives and love our husbands. That's real education. Yes. And, 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 and you know, let me just say this. Let me just say this. If, if your wives, if your husband's libido is dropping, or he has dropped is a good time to grab on to the feet of Jesus. Because you see, if you don't grab on to the feet of Jesus, you'll find other reasons. You'll say, things not working here, so I'll find it somewhere else. But I'm saying, we need to spend time at the feet of Jesus. Uh, uh, there we can learn in the school of Christ. At the feet of Jesus. Yeah, there wouldn't be any pornography at the feet of Jesus. We need to spend time at the feet of Jesus. Real education takes place at the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus you won't be inspired to post half naked selfies on your status. No, at the feet of Jesus you, you, you learn to forgive persons and you forgive yourself. There are some persons, too many Christians, too many Christians, they, they're not forgiving themselves and they will not forgive others. It's a problem. But you see, when we stay at the feet of Jesus, we learn how to do that. Too many Christians are spending too much time on social media. We know what everybody else is saying, but we don't know what Jesus Christ is saying. And I'm saying we need to spend some time like Mary, learning in the school of Christ. You see, in the school of Christ, we learn about morality. In the school of Christ, we learn about integrity. In the school of Christ, we learn about humility. It's very important. In the school of Christ, we learn about fairness. This is what is needed in our society, brothers and sisters. If your education does not inform you, and by the way, if your education does not inform you that there is a difference between a man and a woman, and that when God created man, he created man for a woman, then you have not been schooled yet. I'm saying if your education doesn't tell you there is male and female and that when God created male, he created male for female. I am saying you have not yet been educated. Or the education, if, if you are a pedophile, if you are a pedophile out there, you need to spend some time in the, in the school of Christ. And by the way, you know, in, in our schools, you have regular classes. You know, you have 8 to 4, or 8 to 15, sorry, 8 to 2, 8, 8 to 2.30, you know, or 8.30 to 2.30, to regular classes. And then in school, you have some, some evening classes. And now lots of the schools, are uh, primary schools, giving evening classes because they want the students to do well. The CPA exam is coming. And then in secondary schools, you have, you know, teachers giving 
extra classes. Some of them you have to pay, some you don't have to pay. So I'm suggesting uh, um, this morning that, that if you're a pedophile, you don't even have to be in, in regular classes. You just need to take an evening class with Jesus and it's going to be okay with you. Hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. If you're a lesbian, if you're bisexual, or if you're homosexual, you too can just take a couple evening classes in the, in the school of Christ and you'll get it right in Jesus' name. You don't even have to take all the classes. But just a couple classes in, in, in the school of Christ will get your thinking in the right direction. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying we need to spend some time in the school of Christ. That's where real education takes place. Our education must inform us that what the Bible says of Hebrews 13 and verse 4, marriage is honorable. And all on the bed is on the file, but homongers and adulterers, God will judge. We live in a wild society. I said we live in a wild society. Is who you, you know, who slept with that one, who you sleeping with that one. But the Bible talks about marriage is honorable. It doesn't matter how many divorces taking place. I am saying that a society that decries marriage is a, is a, a society that is doomed for destruction. In the school of Christ, we learn what Exodus 20 and verse 16 says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors. It's a set of lying that is taking place in the world. Pastors lying, politicians lying, judges lying. I'm saying, but the Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. In the school of Christ, we know that Proverbs 12 and verse 22 says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. But they that deal truly are his delight. You know, a politician held up a Bible recently and he said, this book, this book, all Americans, American politician, this book, all Americans should read this book. It's $59.99, $60, special Bible, all Americans. It sounds nice for a politician, for a politician anywhere in the world, anywhere in the Christian world, because if you're a Muslim, I suppose they'll say you should read the Quran. But anywhere in the Christian world where a politician is saying you should read the Bible, that should be good. But the problem is that politician says that that, 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 that book is his favorite book was asked by a reporter once, what's your favorite text? How can you have a favorite book and you don't know a text in the Bible? You can't even repeat a text, but it's your favorite book. And that person's life, um, I mean, when you think of that person's life, it emulates lie and trickery. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, I'm not referring to that. This kind of surface Christianity. I'm talking about being in the school of Christ and having the anointing of God upon your life. It, you, there must be a difference. In the school of Christ, you'll understand that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. And if you're not wise, by the way, it means that you're otherwise. In the school of Christ, you'll understand that. In 1 Corinthians 6, 18, it says, flee fornication. Mm -hmm. It's not something to be bragging about. It's not something to just go about doing. Flee fornication. The Bible says that every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his body. But you'll only learn that in the school of Christ. You will not learn that in parliament. No, you will not learn that in parliament. I mean, you have to continue to teach that. You know, in, in the school of Christ, we learn to apply the golden rule. What's the golden rule? It can be found in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. The golden rule, the Bible says, Therefore all things whatsoever he will that men should do to you, do we even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. I'm saying, just, just pause and think about it for a while. The golden rule, whatever you like for yourself, that's what you should like for others. Brothers and sisters, if the golden rule was practiced, Vladimir Putin will not invade Ukraine. If, if, if the golden rule was, was practiced, Hamas would not have entered Israel on the 7th of October and slaughtered over 1,400 persons. And by the way, if the golden rule was practiced, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, would not have invaded Gaza and, 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 and killed almost 40,000 people. And, 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 and is getting ready to go into Rafa with 1.3 million people and saying, well, they can just take up the tents and move. I'm saying if the golden rule is practice the world will not be in this mess that it is but selfishness and greed everybody thinking about themselves that's not the kind of education we want our youngsters to practice not at all indeed we want our children to get their distinction in mathematics 
We want them to get their distinction in biology and chemistry and, and English. But above all, they must continue to excel in morality. We, 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 we must be concerned that our students are honest, respectful, and God-fearing. We must be concerned about that. If our boys and girls become the lying politicians of tomorrow, that would be a serious case for concern. If our boys and girls become the deceitful spiritual leaders of tomorrow, that would be a tragedy. If our boys and girls and young people today become the nation's bandits, the nation's drug lords. I mean, if we are graduating people that, that, that goes out to be bandits and drug lords and, 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 and gangsters and, 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 and cyber criminals and sex slaves. You know, by the way, over, over the Christ, I, I saw a piece of news yesterday that over the, <laughs> while the world is celebrating, not here in Grenada, while the world is celebrating um, Easter, um, some folks got in some bank, I can't remember the state, and, and, and stole, got away. Over 30 million U.S. dollars. Really? While the world is celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Folks are busy cutting vaults. I'm saying we have to be concerned that we're not graduating persons of that, that kind of caliber. caliber. Brothers and sisters, friends, I'm saying we, our education must supersede mere academics. Our IT teachers must move beyond just teaching the rubrics of computer technology. Uh, yeah, they, 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 must, they must be concerned of teaching netiquette. You know, we talk about etiquette. Yes, our IT teacher must, must, must teach netiquette. That is the online conduct of internet users. How to conduct yourself on the internet. Just, just, just shaming people and blasting people. There are some people who believe that I cannot see in, in cyberspace. You know, just, just do anything because I can't see anybody. So I can do anything. No, no, no. The God is the God of cyberspace as well. We have to teach your children like that. And by the way, if you think that you... You're too educated to work for Christ. You know, some people get education after time. They're, well, my education doesn't allow me to, to, to obey Christ. Oh, that's bad news. If you think you're, I met a sister and she says, I, I'm, a pro, I'm a liberated Christian. I'm a liberated Seventh Adventist. I, I don't have to abide by this. Really, really, you are now educated to disobey Christ. To disobey Christ. Really? Your education shouldn't lead you or shouldn't cause you. To, to, to want to disobey Christ. Real education means we must seek to ensure our young people are not educated dummies. Our church is not served. Our communities are, 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 are worst off. Our country is paralyzed. When we graduate students with 8, 9, or 10 CXC passes, but who possess no capacity to think. Our students must be able to think. And think for themselves. You see, in this corrupt world, we need, to, we need what is called critical thinking. To determine what is right or wrong. Not just go like buffaloes. You know, everybody is doing this. Everybody is posting this. Everybody is saying this, so I'm doing it. No. Our, our student must be taught to think critically. To determine what is right from wrong. To determine what is acceptable and what is not. Critical thinking is essential. You know, Aristotle, the great Greek philosopher. Aristotle said... It is a mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. I said it again. Aristotle once said, it is a mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought, analyze a thought, but, but not necessarily accepting it because after analyzing it, you might realize that is not the proper course of action. That is what real education is all about. Not because everybody is saying it or everybody is doing it. You know, we have to think for ourselves. There's a Chinese proverb which I like. It says, he who asks a question is a fool for five minutes. He who asks a question is a fool for five minutes. But he who does not ask a question remains a fool forever. Education means we, are, we question when it's need to be questioned. That is real education. Brothers and sisters, if our church must accomplish the task for which God has ordained it, we need men and women, boys and girls who are educated in the school of Christ. And we are willing to stand up for God under any circumstances. You know the pioneers of our church, James White, Jane Andrews. Uriah Smith and Ellen White were men and women of unshakable conviction. They knew what they believed. And Ellen White says in a book, Education, page 1H, he says, instead of educated weaklings, institution of learning may send forth men strong to think 
and to act men who are masters and not slaves of their circumstance men who possess breadth of mind clearness of thought and the courage of their conviction this is what we need when we talk about education we've come this far by faith you know a few days ago i posted a, a comment on facebook essentially I, I was commending a student and parents who who decide not to participate in the character, ga character games because they, they were told, oh, you're mandated, you, you have to be in the stadium on Sabbath. No, those students could, could participate. Sunday was, they could participate. Monday, there was nothing inherently wrong with character. But, but they were supposed to be in camp, I'm told, from since Thursday. And, 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 and then that would take them right through. They couldn't leave um, to go um, to church. And they were told, well, you know, I'm seven Adventists. And, 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 and person responded, yeah, but you got to be there. So I posted a comment and a, a, a post and and, and and Facebook and and um, you know many persons commented, but 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 there was a barrage of comments which was very unsavory, very unfortunately, very unfortunate coming from some some persons who who say they have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, friends. It, it, it real education means that we ought to obey God rather than man because ultimately we have to answer to God. There are some persons who don't even have a, a sense of who God is. We go to church on Saturday, some of us, we go to church on Sunday, but we want to do what we want when we want to do. That's not real education. Real education will cause us to be obedient to our Heavenly Father. My most favorite passage, sorry, my most favorite quote coming from my. Undoubtedly, my, my, my favorite author, Ellen White, in her book, Education, page 5, 7, says, The greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought a soul. Men who in the emo souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as a needle to the pole. Men who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. This is what we want in true education, I want to remind you, I want to remind us that there is a battle between good and evil. Brothers and sisters, as we come down, there is, there is a battle between good and evil. You know, a battle between morality and immorality. A battle between righteousness and unrighteousness. Yes, there is a battle between Christ and Satan. And this battle is fought out in our very education system. And, and we have to help our young people to make those choices and let them know, let our boys know that you are created male. God, the creator created you. That. And, and let our girls know that you are created female. And the creator created you that way. And, and, and let there be no mixing. Let there be no mixing. You know, in, 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 or, or, let there be no confusion in the minds of our young people as to who they are. It's our responsibility to teach them the right way of the Lord. Yes, so I remind you, it is a battle between Christ and Satan. But there is no need to panic. I say there is no need to panic. Uh, why am I saying that? I'm saying the Christ, the side of Christ is a winning side. Oh, if you believe that, you can type amen. You can type hallelujah. I'm saying there is no need to panic. Yes, we are involved in a war. A, a war between Christ and Satan. A war between good and evil, but good will win. I, I'm saying Christ will win. How do I know that? Yeah, I know that because Matthew 16, 18, Jesus talking to his disciples and asking them, you know, what, what are people saying about me? And the apostle Peter says, responded to Christ and said, you are the Christ. And Jesus Christ responded to Peter in Matthew 16, 18. Watch this. And, and, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock, not upon Peter, upon this firm, upon this firm decision, this, this statement of, of affirmation that you've made, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I say hallelujah to the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church because the church is pushing against the gate of hell and the gates of hell will not withstand the pressures of the church. So all those who come against righteousness will fail. All those who come against, all those who rail against principle will fail. All those who despise morality will fail. All those who are fighting against God and his people will fail. Because the gates of hell will never prevail against the church of God. And finally, 
Real education prepares, prepares us for a life beyond this present world. I'm saying real education. If you're educated, you know, you graduated with honors. You know, that's, that's a big thing in university. Who's graduated with honors? You're the valedictorian. You know, you, 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 you're bright. But your brightness and your intelligence only is only concerned with this life. No, that's a problem. I'm saying real education is concerned about the life to come. Real education reminds us that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Uh, you know, real education. One day, brothers and sisters, the mossy old grave where the pilgrim sleep shall be open as wide as before. And the millions of sleep in the mighty deep shall leave on this earth once more. One day, Jesus Christ is coming. One day, the eastern skies will be set ablaze. We'll see the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. One day, we'll see Jesus coming with power and great glory. We, we will be taken to a land with extraterrestrial beauty. And, and, and there, as we land, as we land in heaven, we, we, we'll, we, you know, we, we'll fly past Mars and fly past Venus and fly past Mercury. And just as we get there, we'll see Jesus but before I get to Jesus I want to talk to Daniel I want to talk to Esther talk to talk to I want to talk to to to, to Noah and, and Abraham and, and all of these patriarchs but I wouldn't rest until I talk to Jesus because real education the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom brothers and sisters today I don't know about you but I give you Jesus real education entails Real education entails accepting Jesus and living for Jesus. I repeat, real education entails accepting Jesus and living for Jesus. So I don't know where you are. You're in your home. You are at a church. I don't know. Probably a church and you're still listening. You're in a hospital bed. You, 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 you're in a work somewhere. I don't know. But you're listening to me. I give you the opportunity to accept Jesus. On, on, on the screen, there's always the, the online option so that you can click and, and there's a prayer card there. There are other cards and, and information that is there. You, you, can, you, you can click there and, and get in touch with the crew and, and, and you can have an opportunity to be really educated in the, in the, in the, in the life of Jesus, in the living of Jesus. I give you this opportunity. I give you this opportunity with your heads bowing and eyes closed and our hearts lifted towards heaven. Brothers and sisters, we've come this far by faith, no doubt. We've come this far by faith. And I, I, I have no doubt that if we keep with Jesus, we will end up in Canaan's fear and happy land. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Our hearts are lifted towards heaven. Father, we thank you for your words to our hearts today. We, we thank you for... for Taking the school for the last 65 years, the Grenada SDA Comprehensive School, helping shape hearts and minds to real education. We thank you for that. But Lord, these are difficult times. And education is no challenge. The staff is challenged. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for them. I pray your anointing upon them. And I pray for students, even who currently attend the school, that your anointing will be upon them. And Lord, as they go out um, into the world of work, they will keep the banner flying high. That's the banner of Jesus. Because someday soon you're coming back. And I pray that one day, when it pleases you to come to the eastern skies, that each one of us, those who are listening on and those who are viewing and those who will view will be part of your eternal kingdom. Until then, until that day, keep us faithful, we pray. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen and amen. God bless you. As we come to the close of the walk down memory lane, let us carry forward the essence of gratitude and the determination that embodies Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School. Let us remain steadfast in our commitment to the principles of faith, education, and the service, the service that 
have guided our path thus far. As we embark on the next phase of our journey together, a heartfelt thank you to all who have joined us in this significant milestone. As we say farewell today, let's all cherish the memories, bonds, and wisdom being imparted at the Grenada Seven Day Comprehensive School. Cheers to 65 years of outstanding achievements and countless more to come. And as we wrap up today, please join us in singing number 608, Faith is the Victory. We have come this far by faith.
in the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him.